So this is called Winona Beach? No. Now, am I overdressed? I've been having trouble breathing. Does that sound like an excuse? There may or may not be a boat on fire out there. This is Joel. Together with Tony and Jared, he gave up everything to buy a boat and go on the adventure of a lifetime. But after a death-defying sail to Cuba, he returned to Key West and found himself Wish alone. Good luck on this adventure. When Michael finished school, I asked her to sail with me to the Bahamas. Four months later, we made it to the Dominican Republic. Broke and in love. Bums on a Boat is a true story about facing fear, finding adventure, and falling in love. Each tale is brought to you by our patrons and viewers. Subscribe and click the bell to get notified about weekly premieres and visit our website to learn more. Thank you for watching. These are the tales of Boab. guys this week we stayed in a six hundred thousand dollar condo in Cap Cana which is in Punta Cana Cap Cana is like a gated community a lot of security and when you're driving around inside of Cap Cana it really feels like you're in the United States of America or any other first world country So what you're gonna experience in this episode is the condo that we stayed at in Cap Cana the amazing beach in Cap Cana, what it's like to go scuba diving in Punta Cana, and we're also going to talk about how that experience actually solidified for us that what we really want to be doing is living and traveling on a tiny boat and experiencing developing countries. Morning, so why aren't you in the hot tub? It's bloody hot. <laughs> this is the hottest hot tub we've ever been in in our entire lives. We are in Punta Cana, specifically Cap Cana, which is like an exclusive little resort village over here on the east coast of the DR. And we've been we've spent the last two and a half years in Luperon, which is on the opposite side. It's like the northwest, almost mm -hmm. as far to that side as you can go. So we drove all the way across to now we're on the southeast coast. Yeah. And we are in like a, a it's you could call it a tourist bubble. So we're totally getting a different experience. <laughs> This is way Here. different from Luperon, let's just say that. This condo that we're staying in was found on Airbnb, and luckily enough, the host is a Russian, and Maria is a Russian as well. So we've been able to coordinate with Vladimir through Maria really easily, and that's made this whole experience pretty cool. What kind of vibes do you get from Vladimir, Maria? He seems <clears throat> like a sweet guy. Yeah, I'm sorry, come eat. <laughs> I got you eating breakfast. Amazing. Um, very, very caring host. Just very, you know, everything on top of things. He sent us videos how to get into the condo, videos of explanation, every little detail. Just very, very caring. He was on his phone, answered his phone every time. Just like a typical Russian. friend of mine that came to visit, his name is Drew, and we've known each other for going on 25 years now, yeah, something like that. Something like that, yeah. And Drew is an RN, registered nurse, so we live different lives. And he actually just got his passport really recently, like just before the buzzer. He had his plane ticket before his passport. So he hasn't really been out of the country. So there might be a little culture shock, what do you think of your, he's been here and um, he got to drive all the way across. Well, half, we picked him up at the airport and drove, you know, across the Dominican Republic all the way to here. So what's your initial uh, 
Oh, it definitely, uh, definitely been a culture shock for sure, but it's a good experience for me and I'm happy to be here with my friends and um, I'm looking forward to a good time. All right, I'm the garçon for this epic adventure that we've been on. Guess I should pop the trunk. Woo. So we rented this car from Junior. He is the local mechanic in Loop Run. He's the best mechanic in town, as far as we know. If you have either an inboard on a, or outboard or even a car engine, all engines. But this AC is a game changer. And uh, here we go. Bye bye. Hi, So this is called Winona Beach? No. Can you help me out? It's called Juanillo Beach. I was close. Juanillo. I'm going to call it Winona Beach. But if you're looking it up and you want to visit here, you're going to want to look for Juanillo Beach. How do you spell that? J-U-A-N-I-L-L-O. -L -L -O. Now, am I overdressed? for this little recon mission, maybe. But I'd rather be overdressed than underdressed. We're out at the seawall, it's basically a net. It's a basically a swimming pool. All the way, as far as you can see, from that direction to that direction. And this way, it's all sand, really nice. It's like six to eight feet deep. Drew's really trying to get in shape. He recommended that we do a push-up challenge. Start Count it off, Michael. Way. One, two. Thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty, forty-five. Joel has not been doing push-ups lately. I actually have, but I, I have a serious pectoral injury, I promise you. Ah, Come on, you guys, you guys know it, you know it. When I climbed, I climbed a palm tree and I jumped and hugged it, I've been having trouble breathing. Does that sound like an excuse? Sounds like an excuse to me. <laughs> no, that was impressive though. I still thought I would compete a little better than that. How All many right. did you get in? Stop, Drew. I think you tapped out at 36, I we, babe. I think I might have got last place. I think Tony beat me. I don't know. I wouldn't. <laughs> yeah. So driving across the Dominican Republic is actually a little bit insane. I would say it's crazier than any of the sailing that Michael and I have done so far, including a couple crazy storms. But we did all that in order to take our guests scuba diving at the best possible location. All right, I've been left behind. Things got really crazy. I think everyone's just in a rush. I don't know what's happening, but we're at Happy Dive. We're just about to go scuba diving. We're gonna take a boat ride out. Like the only way to hard way, we don't like the only way to soft ways. We like the only way to hard Have we found the spot, Nigel? Yes, sir, we are. But Nigel knows the waters. Sounds like we're right over a coral. How you doing, Drew? <laughs> He's got the pressure going on. Uh, sorry, guys, the camera got all foggy down there. I couldn't get any footage. I don't. It was just something weird with the case, so. 
That was a pretty epic dive. We saw a sea turtle, an eel, a lot of snapper. We're uh, heading to another place. I'm gonna try to get the camera whipped into shape so we can bring you guys down there. Everyone doing all right? Weather's rolling in. All right, we got done just in time. Yeah. There may or may not be a boat on fire out there. Probably. Yeah, it looks like it is. That's the boat on fire all the time, Nigel. Sometimes. Whoa. I vomited half half the way back. You look a lot better though. Yeah. Probably See, looking pretty white and green there, huh? Bye. So you Bye. just got seasick? Yeah. Diving was fine, man. I just, coming up, I, I can't handle the rocking back and forth business. <laughs> oh, crap. I pushed it, it says REC at the top. Does that mean it's recording? Oh, oh honey, yeah. It's recording? There's no time or nothing. No, no, Oh, oh. I'm sure you guys are wondering where Lola was at the whole time that we were living it up in Punta Cana. But she was living the high life at Dennis's little all-inclusive as well. So she was there with Dennis and Rocco having a great time, but we missed her and it seems like she missed us. And she even missed the boat a little bit. I think Lolo is pretty happy to get back on this boat and she can't wait to go to Puerto Rico. Isn't that right, sweetie? Yes, that's right. I feel like I know what you guys are thinking and that is we're bums on a boat. What the heck are we doing at some luxury resort back in the first world bubble? when we're all about trying to live and travel on a tiny boat. And what I have to say to that is this, that variety is the spice of life and experiencing things that are different from what we're used to actually gives us a great deal of appreciation for what we have and what we're doing. Actually being in that world of comfort and luxury and beautiful beaches was nice, but there was like, no substance to it maybe whereas out here the challenge and hardship that we experience damn near on a day-to-day -day basis actually makes this life worthwhile well i would also add that's only that's to us i'm not i don't personally think it's general i don't think it lacks substance across the board i think that the way we are that is the case but i'm not gonna agree with michael that 
if you're living a luxury lifestyle, you have no substance. I disagree 100%. Yeah, yeah, that's... that's I'm just saying, for us personally, do, do you agree with that? 100%. Yeah. For us, we do, like, we wake up motivated with purpose. Things are challenging, but that's how we want to live. Whoop, sorry guys. We're back on the boat. Don't worry. Sorry. Don't worry. I interrupted Michael. Go ahead. I just felt like she was making a generalized statement about luxury life not having substance. And I just think that's For us personally. Us. Wherever we're at in life right now, yeah, we seem to thrive on struggle and simple living. And that's just the way she is right now. But yeah. we are motivated more than ever to get Shock Mate sailing. Believe it or not, we're very close to sending it towards Puerto Rico. We're hiding some secrets on the boat, some really exciting ones. We've been doing some work. And we're going to get back to the hard life. And we're hoping to make some hard miles coming up shortly. Let's go, baby. Thanks for sticking with us. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next week.